YouTube dominates the video landscape with around 2 billion monthly users, consuming 1 billion hours of content daily. It's practically replaced traditional TV, becoming the default platform for both businesses and consumers to connect. Today, I'll be walking through how to create a YouTube function tool library to let your AI agents search videos, playlists, channels, and even summarize YouTube videos using Pydentic AI in Python. Let me give you a demo to showcase a few things we can do with the YouTube tool. Here, let's say I want to get the channel info for my channel in Toyota. I can say find the channels Jin in Toyota and tell me about those channels. If we look at the log, a few things are happening. First, because there are many channels with similar names, and the AI agent does not know the channel IDs. It will use the search channels function to retrieve the target channel's ID. It then calls another function to get the channel's info and present the result. From there, we can ask a follow-up question to either analyze the channels or do a channel comparison. Another common use case that I run pretty often is getting the latest videos from a channel. For example, if I want to get the latest videos published from a channel, I can say, what are the last five videos published by a channel? And the AI agent can easily provide the video's information without even going into YouTube. If you are a business or someone who watches a lot of videos, then you will find the YouTube function tool library extremely useful. Now that's enough of talking. Let's dive into the YouTube tool library development. To create the YouTube tool functions, we will be using YouTube API. To set up YouTube API in Google Cloud, navigate to console.cloud.google.com. If you don't have an account, sign up for an account first. It is completely free. In the Google Cloud Console, Look for the project dropdown at the top of the page and click on it. Then select new project if you don't have a Google Cloud project created. Give your project a name and click create. Once the project is created, select the project. To enable YouTube API, navigate to APIs and services and click library. Search for YouTube Data API. Click YouTube Data API v3 and enable the API. The YouTube Data API is free to use with a daily quota of 10,000 units. If you go to quotas and system limits, the queries per day quota type will display how much quota you have left for the day. And different operations cost different amounts of quota. The search operations cost more than the regular list operations. Just keep that in mind when you send your request. Next, we need to set up the OAuth consent screen. Go back to the Google Cloud Console. Under APIs and Services, select OAuth consent screen. Give the app a name and go through the steps to set up the app. For the audience type, choose external. The app is the name that users will see when they're asked to grant permission to your application. Now we need to add users who will have access to the project. In the navigation menu, select audience. In test users, select add users and add the users. Now that we have finished setting up the OAuth consent screen, the last step is to create an OAuth client account to generate the credentials needed for your application to access the YouTube data API. In the navigation menu, go to APIs and services, click credentials. Click create credentials and select OAuth client ID. 
for the application type, select desktop app. Give the client ID a name and click create. Download the client file in your project directory and name the client file clientsecret.json. And we are done setting up the YouTube data API access in Google Cloud Console. The next step is to develop the YouTube function tool library in Python. For the development, we are going to install the required Python libraries first. Open your terminal and run the command to install Pydentic AI, Rich, YouTube Transcription, and Google API Python libraries. To organize the YouTube tool module in your project directory, create a folder called Tools. Inside the Tools folder, create a subfolder called Google. We are going to use the Google folder to store all the Google-related tools like Google Drive, Gmail, Google Sheets, which I'll be sharing in future videos. In the Google folder, create a Python file called googleapis.py. This is going to be a utility module containing a helper function to simplify Google API connection. Inside the Google APIs module, import the Python dependencies and set up the loggers. And to reduce noise in the logs, configure the logging levels for the Google, OpenAI, and HTTPX libraries. To authenticate a Google API service like Gmail, Google Sheets, or YouTube, create a function called CreateService. Inside the function, Set up the required variables to connect to a Google API service. To manage authentication tokens between sessions, create a token directory and check for existing credentials from an access token file. And the next code block is used to handle token refresh or first time authentication by implementing the OAuth flow. Finally, build the service object with the error handling. That covers everything for the Google APIs module. Let's move on to the YouTube tool module development. Create a Python file called youtubetools.py and make sure you save the module inside the Google directory. In the module, import the Python dependencies and set up the logger. Next, Define the data models using Pydentic's base model class for playlist information, playlist search results, channel information, channel search results, video information, and video search results. Each model should include appropriate fields with descriptions to document your data structures. To extract video IDs from URLs or direct ID strings, create a function called extractVideoID that takes an input string and returns the video ID if found. In the function, implement two rejects patterns, one to extract IDs from YouTube URLs and another to validate standalone IDs. To download YouTube video transcripts, Create a download transcript function that accepts a video ID and a Boolean parameter to include timestamp in the output. In the function, we will extract the video ID using the extract video ID function, then use the YouTube transcript API get transcript method to fetch the transcript and format the result based on whether timestamps are needed or just the text. Now create the main YouTube tool class with the class attributes to define YouTube API name, version, and scopes. In the init method, define the client secret attribute that takes the path of a client secret file. Then call the init YouTube service method to establish the API connection. In the init YouTube service method, call the create service function to create a YouTube API instance object to connect to YouTube API endpoints. The YouTube service property returns the service instance. 
This provides a clean way to access the YouTube service from the class instance. The rest of the methods are going to be YouTube tools to be used with AI agents. I will just briefly go through them one by one. To retrieve channel information, use the getChannelInfo method by passing a channel ID. This method will return data about a YouTube channel like channel title, description, number of subscribers, photo view count, etc. For searching channels, use the search channel method with a channel name parameter. This function finds YouTube channels matching your search term and returns details for each channel found. You can filter results by publication date, region code, and sort order. And here's the rest of the parameters. And here's the while loop to make the request call to fetch channels until max results is met. And here's the rest of the function. To find playlists, call the search playlist method with a search query. This method returns a list of matching playlists along with their titles, descriptions, and channel information. You can customize the search with filters for publication dates and region. And here's the rest of the parameters. And here's the while loop to make the request code to fetch playlist items until max results is met. You will notice that most of the methods have similar setup. The only thing that is different is the API endpoint. And here's the rest of the function. For video searching, use the search videos method with your search term. This returns videos matching your criteria, including details like title, description, and publication date. Additional filters let you specify video duration and region preferences. And here's the rest of the parameters. And here's the while loop to make the request code to fetch videos until max results is met. And here's the rest of the function. To get detailed video information, use the getVideoInfo method with one or more video IDs. This provides complete details about specific videos, including view counts, likes, comments, duration, in topic categories. And here's the rest of the function. To get videos from a specific channel, call the getChannelVideos method with a channel ID. This retrieves the most recently uploaded videos info from that channel. Keep in mind that the videos retrieved using the getChannelVideos method will not contain static data like views, likes, comment count. And here's the while loop to make the request code to fetch channels videos until max results is met. And here's the rest of the function. And lastly, the construct hyperlink method generates proper YouTube URLs for channel, playlist, and video based on its ID and type. By combining all the available functions from the YouTube tool class, I'm pretty sure you can have your AI agents to streamline your YouTube workflow or video searches tremendously. To simplify the YouTube tool module import in the Google directory, create a Python file called inner.py with two underscores on each end. Type the import statement showing on the screen and save the file. Now it is time to test the YouTube tool with an AI agent using Pydantic AI. In the project directory, create a blank Python file and let's call it testYouTubeTool.py. Inside the script, 
import the Python dependencies and create a YouTube tool instance. One thing you need to be aware of when using Google APIs is almost all the APIs have a rate limit. In Pydentic AI, when an agent makes multiple tool calls, it's going to call them asynchronously or in parallel, which can easily throw a rate limit reach exception. To overcome the issue, create the time delay function as a workaround to delay each tool call. To set up and configure a YouTube agent, create a function called YouTube Agent Setup. In the function, set up the YouTube agent with a name, model, and model settings. To ensure there is a delay between each tool call in the system prompt, list out the steps how function calls should be executed. 90% of the time agent will follow the guidelines, but occasionally it may ignore the guidelines if too many calls are needed to be executed. Just keep that in mind. Then add the tools and define the number of retry attempts if agent run fails. To add the timestamp so agent knows what today's date is, create a function to return today's timestamp and use the agent system prompt decorator to append the system prompt. And in the last step, create and call the main function. In the main function, we will create an instance of the YouTube agent, then insert the procedure to launch the conversation session. Now we are ready to test the YouTube tool with the YouTube agent. On your terminal, run the test script. When connecting to the YouTube data API server for the first time, it will prompt you to log in. Log in to your account and grant permission to the app. If you set up everything correctly in Google Cloud Console, you should see the message. The authentication flow has completed. You may close this window. To confirm the script, is successfully connecting to YouTube API endpoint. Close the tab. Now in your project directory, you should see a folder called token files is created. Inside the folder, you should see the YouTube token file, which contains the access token to the authentication session. If you need to change the account or token session is expired, simply delete the token file and reauthenticate. All right, for our first test, I will ask, search for GeoGen and Tesla, and tell me about those channels. If we look at the log, we can see that the agent made two function calls to search the two channels. That's an indication that the delay function is correctly used. And from the output, the agent has successfully returned the channel's info. Now we can ask a follow-up question to compare the two channels. And use the last output as context. The agent returns a list of differences based on the information it retrieved previously. I think that's enough for testing, since we can clearly see the agent is able to run the YouTube tool calls successfully with the information returned. And that concludes this YouTube tools development tutorial. I hope you find the video useful. If there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.